This is a continuation of propositional logic lecture and we were looking at a non-committed example. What about this? Boil the water and drink it. And then the committed addition of that is drink the water and boil it. So clearly both the sentences are not the same. The and is not commutating. What's happening out here? So actually what it means is is and then. And is actually and then. Boil the water and then drink it. There's a temporal aspect to it. First you do the left side, then you do the right side. It's not the same as drink the water and then boil it. So and then it would be another operator which is not commutated. So let's look at the AND operator. The AND actually has many different words in English to describe it. It is raining but I'm at home. It means the same thing as it is raining and I'm at home. It is raining so I'm at home. This one means basically the rain is cause of you staying at home. And what about I've got an umbrella also I got a raincoat. That actually means AND. That means you got both of them. So English is slightly different from logic and it has more connotations. The words AND can have multiple uh, meanings. Let's look at a comma operator. I have a pen, paper and pencil. This actually means I have a pen and I have a paper and I have a pencil. So the, the comma becomes an AND operator in the first. In the second example, will you have tea, coffee or juice? This is the same as will you have tea or will you have coffee or will you have juice? So in this case you can see the comma, this comma became an R. So from the English when you speak, you actually the context is clear whether you, the comma is AND or R. And also the comma is actually just a pause. You don't actually say comma in, when you talk. You just pause and the pause is understood as AND or R or whatever you're supposed to mean in English. Right? The people understand the meaning from the pause and the way you speak. And not is the negation. We already looked at that. So when you have attached not in front of a statement, it means the statement is false. And if you have put two nots, it means the statement is true. Not not raining is same as it is raining. And that's and the truth table for not is really simple. Zero becomes one and one becomes zero. And then there's another operator. So let's look at example. Anu says, Will you have tea or coffee? Biju says, Yes, please. As a logician would say yes, that means yes, I'll have tea or coffee. So Anu, what actually Anu is saying is that you can have tea or coffee, but not both. Not both, yeah. You can say tea exclusive or coffee. That means at, choose exactly one of one of tea or coffee. Okay. And a truth table of XORS A and B are not equal. If A is one or B is one, then A X O R B is one. Otherwise it is zero. And what are properties of XOR? It is commutative and A XOR true is not of A. A XOR false is A. So in this case XOR means not equal to. A XOR B same as A not equal to B. So one is true, one is false for the whole statement to be true. Then we had operator if. If means implies the arrow, right, left to right arrow. Therefore if connects two sentences, if it is raining then the ground is wet. So in this case, the rain is the cause of the ground getting the, the ground wet. But the arrow doesn't imply the cause and effect. It's just saying two statements and they're connected by an arrow. So the ground is wet if it is raining. You can actually flip the thing if you put the if at the end, as they do it in the language Perl. They use if at the end of the statement instead of at the beginning. To put the more important statement in the beginning of the sentence, whatever you want to emphasize in English. And you can say x greater than 5 implies x is also greater than 4. You can compare if implies therefore in different sentences. It is raining, therefore the ground is wet. So the rain is pointing, implying the ground is wet. The ground is wet, therefore it is raining. In this case, uh, the ground is wet, therefore it is raining. But in this case, they both are not equal. They are actually converse. We'll look at that later. The ground is wet because it is raining. The rain is causing the ground to be wet. It is raining because the ground is wet and in this case it doesn't imply number two and four are similar one and three are similar let's look at the properties we'll look at it again more when you look at converse and contrapositive so the truth table of implies is if a is true then b has to be true if b is for a is true and b is false then the whole statement is wrong or false or, or zero otherwise 
if a is zero you don't really care what b is and if a is one then b better be one okay and what are the properties of arrow first of all a, a implies b is not the same as b implies a so it's not commutative and then if a is false you don't really care what the conclusion is if something is saying if horses could fly then anything could be implied then beggars could choose you would say in English and there are more operators let's look at the unless operator it is sunny unless it is raining so unless behaves like if not it is sunny if it is not raining go home unless there is a class go home if there is no class so English has many ways of saying the same thing but it means unless so you can make up your own examples to understand uh, the how to use unless operator and how to parse it and what is contrapositive when you say rain implies the wet is the same as if it is not wet then it's not raining so when you put a not in front of them the arrow switches direction so rain implies wet not wet implies not rain that's called contrapositive it's, it has the same meaning as uh, they both are equal and the, and the other one is a converse if two sentences are not these two sentences are not equal if it is raining then the ground is wet and the converse is it is raining only if the ground is wet so they are not equivalent and that's why they are known as converse this is arrow going from left to right and this is going from right to left a uh, left right to left to right again and right to left so the so rain implies wet and a converse is wet implies the rain converse is false as the ground may be wet even when it's not raining so this is not true but rain can will always cause the ground to be wet but the converse is not really true and then there is a, in logic we have the if and only if operator IFF for short in what a IFF B means is a if and only if B means if a a implies B and B implies A so basically for example would be X is X by X equal to 1 X divided by X is always 1 if and only if X is not equal to 0 in mathematics example okay so what is causality causality means the one is a cause and something is effect so the big debate in physics that does does the, is it really cause and effect or things just happen and they're correlated so but in in logic we have cause and effect it is raining so the ground is wet so the raining is rain is causing the, the road to be wet the road is wet because it is raining in fact the because reveals that the cause be the cause rain is the cause of the road being wet and you can put arrow to explain like that but one thing we should careful is that if two things happen together it doesn't mean that one is the cause and one is the effect for example in this case we see everybody who went to the moon has had eaten chicken doesn't mean chicken sends you to the moon so this is known as a fallacy just because two things are correlated doesn't mean there's, there's a cause effect relationships many things happen together doesn't mean something happens for example when planets align things happen but doesn't mean the planets cause the things to happen or things cause planets to align so if you have questions put them in the comments thank you